coming up next on Button to Christ Ministries. All we have to do is come to the mercy seat, confess our sins, come with a, a, a contrite heart and come and claim the promises and claim the word and we will be exposed to the power of God. I'm telling you, the power that we will be exposed to with the word is limitless. That's in the Bible. This Bible is a powerhouse that contains the word of God. Stay tuned. I remember, I remember I read about how 3ABN got started. I also read about Loma Linda, um, the television station, that they started it in a barn with one broken down piece of camera, you know? <laughs> I, I listened to the testimony, and it was barely working. I think somebody donated that camera somewhere, you know what I mean? Because when I look and see um, that God is going to bless us, you know? You know, we're, we're struggling with equipment to get everything working. You know what I mean? <laughs> and we still live stream. We're still able to reach many souls because we have people connected on the prayer line from different countries, from Australia, from um, U.S., from France, Portugal, Jamaica. We have people connect all over the world watching live and we praise God so you can visualize with us that one day we're gonna have some huge studios all over the world because I remember when Tria being started I remember when Loma Linda University when they start in a barn and in the barn they had one camera <laughs> but God is good God is good we are working on things and the Lord has been blessing us and we know that God is going to help us to improve. Tonight is really a high night. Um, I had a, a word prepared, very powerful word. And I was excited until when I got to my office, the Lord says, no. That's not the word. And I'm telling you, this ministry is strictly about the Lord and his word. Trust me. I'm telling you this. I was hyped up and I hope I will get an opportunity to bring that word. So again, we just want to say welcome. You're watching from different countries. God is with us. We just want to welcome all those who are here in the sanctuary. We know the time is getting cold and colder and people prefer to stay home and watch, but God is awesome. And it's always good because we have extra things to share with those who come to the sanctuary. So we are praising God because of his goodness and his mercies towards his people. Praise God. Okay, I'm going to pray and I, I know we have somebody can play the keyboard in the, in the audience, and I'm not caught picking at you, but, you know, sometimes you can probably play a little thing in the background, you know, as we are here. God is awesome. He's powerful. We're going to pray right now. And, uh, and, and I was saying, it's not Brother Shea, you know, it's Brother Shea, we're talking our great friend over there. He's a, a keyboard man, Brother Shea. So we, we are equipped. Okay, so I'm going to pray and ask you to be with us now. Pray for me as we bring the word of the Lord. I want to tell you that the word that the Lord gave me is the power of the word, God's word. I know I, I did already the power of his character, uh, um, God's power. And now the Lord, we just finished a powerful series uh, the seven churches, and now the Lord is saying to us, talk about the power of the word. 
just speaking the word of God, how God just spake his word and power came. What about his power? Remember 1 John 1, from verse 1, it talks about the, 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 the word was with God and the word is God. So I'm telling you, gear up. Okay, let's pray right now. As the Spirit of the Lord is with us, let's pray. Father in heaven, gracious God whom we serve, your people are in your sanctuary tonight. Oh God, we love you and we know you love us. And you have given us your word, your word that is so powerful that when you speak, oh God, things happen. And Lord, if we were to only use your promises and use your word, oh God, it will pierce and we will see deliverance. Oh God, hear your people tonight. No matter where over the world, your people join in with us. Hear us, O oh God. Allow your words to go forth with power. Hide me now, O oh God, beneath the cross. And let only Christ alone be seen, high and lifted up. We thank you, O oh God. We give you glory. We worship you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Praise God. What a loving God. What a loving God we serve. The power of his word. Trust me. No, I'm going slow and I'm taking it down. I want you to turn with me to John chapter 1. And everybody knows that. John chapter 1. And the thing about it is, the word of God is really powerful. I'm going to read verse 1 to 3. And it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Lord of mercy. Just reading the word is powerful. The word of God is powerful. So the word is God. If the word is God, can we comprehend then or fathom in our own mind the word is God? When you speak the word, that things can happen. If you read the word, things can happen. I shared the testimony already. Because you know that even though the name of Jesus Christ is powerful, but the name is the word. And the word is Jesus Christ. Listen, it said it here in John 1. The word is powerful. Brethren, listen again. I shared a testimony before about a gentleman way back. I, saw, I was doing some work and I saw this gentleman with a group of people around him. And they were talking. And he was telling them that his girlfriend worshipped the other side. And he's saying, when she's coming over my house, I do all these signs, I get the Ouija board out. But when things get out of hand, all I do is say, Jesus. And everything stops. I heard that. So I went up to him and said, do you know who Jesus is? And he said, I don't know, but it works. His exact word, that it works. And we as God's people, if we understand the power of the name and the word of God, 
and we start to use it in the rightful context. Mercy. I'm telling you, all we have to do is come to the mercy seat, confess our sins, come with a, a, a contrite heart, and come and claim the promises and claim the word, and we will be exposed to the power of God. I'm telling you, the power that we will be exposed to with the word is limitless. That's in the Bible. This Bible is a powerhouse that contains the word of God. But we have no idea, you see. We have no idea about the power and the context. We have no power, no idea about it. As Christians, if we have an idea about this power, our lives will definitely change. Our lives will change. I was speaking to somebody, you know. I was speaking to this gentleman. And when I was speaking to this gentleman, you know what he says? He says, you know, I'm compromising the Sabbath. But what am I going to do? I have to pay for my children. I have to eat. And I said to him, you don't know God. You have no idea who God is. That's what's wrong, that we, we think that my situation is so deep, I have to do what I need to do. What about God? We don't understand the word. God will cause us to suffer for years to bring us higher and turn us into mighty people for Jesus. He will allow that, the chastening. He will allow us to go through trials and pain for years before the real power comes. If he's going to call one of us as Elijah, as Ruth, as Naomi, if he's going to call some of us as Mary, if he's going to call some of us, you think it's just going to just happen overnight and everything is nice with you? No. There's going to be tests and trial. The devil is coming up. It's an opposing power, an opposing force. Some people ask the question, why don't God then just eliminate the devil and put an end to everything? What do you think the host of angels is going to say? Do you know how many angels is two-thirds? Anybody knows the number? Okay, do you know how many angels is one-third? that the devil has? Do you know how many billions of angels? Billions. What about if the Lord was to just eliminate Satan? What do you think the angels, the two-thirds, going to say? He's not such a good God. Why would you not allow your word to be fulfilled? Why would you eliminate him? What kind of God are you? God could have done that from day one. But he did not. That's how some of us, God should have killed us. But we're still alive. With all the way we treated God, the way we sinned, God spoke to us several times and we turn away and walk away from God. We don't deserve it. You think we deserve God sending his only begotten son to die for you and I? Do we deserve it? If you really think on that, brethren, then your heart is going to move to see the compassion and the love of God the Father. How much he loves us. That he sent his only son to bled and died for you and I. What does this say to us? Brethren, what does it say? The Lord loves us and his word carries power if we only believe. The word is limitless with the power. The word transforms. It transforms lives. It encourages to. When you hear the word, you know sometimes you're in the valley and somebody just call you and encourage you with a word from the word. Just encourage you and says, you know, don't worry. God is with you. You know, they that are with us are more my brother. When he comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up the standard. 
when you hear those encouragement, his word breaks stronghold. I've seen it many times when we're praying for people and just pray and command in Jesus' name. It brings power. And that's why when we pray for sicknesses and stuff, we have to have a promise. If you have cancer, find the scripture with the issue of blood and claim it, and, and claim it against the cancer. You will get healing. Just this week, I've prayed for so many people with pain, with headache. I shared um, on the prayer line about this woman who have a pain in her stomach. And I just said, rest your hand on your stomach. And I prayed and rebuked it and claimed the scripture and the promises. And when she removed, she said, the pain is gone. Many times it happened. Many times. And, you know, last night I prayed with a young lady from Jamaica. And when I prayed, she had a headache. And I command the headache three times. And it did not go. And I was walking up and down and piercing and said, Lord, nine out of ten times you answer and the headache is gone. What is happening? And then the thought come to me, where she is, is heavy duty stronghold. Tell her to call me when she gets home. She did not call me, but she will by God's grace. But the thing about it is, when you have stronghold around you, it's hard to get deliverance. But the word of God is able to break down the stronghold. Because the word of God can show you and teach you. He can speak to you. He's able to break down bondage, break bondages, break all the situation. He's able to break chains and set people free. He's able to allow you to have an experience with God. Look on Paul on the way to Damascus. The word of God. When the Lord spoke to him and asked him, why you fight against me, Saul? When the Lord challenges him, that word pierces his heart and it gave him an experience. And not only that, he was struck blind. You know why? When truth comes, it black out all errors, all darkness disappear. You got to think like the way I'm thinking in the spiritual realm. Spiritually, I'm talking. If we want to walk closer with the Lord, the word, the power of the word is able. The word brings also healing. Many, many, many times I've prayed for Adventists. And healing come immediately. And who you think doubt? They are saying, I can't believe. I can't believe this thing happened. And I said, sister, why are you praying with me then if you don't believe? <laughs> no, it's real, it's real. Many times, brethren. And I'm convinced, you see, when I say, I say, God, you're so good. There's so many times we pray for a situation and it's broken exactly the same time. And I say, God, you're so good. If God's people just embrace the word and carry the power, Lord of mercy. You think we're seeing anything yet? But I don't know. Many times I say, do you ready for the power? Are you ready for the power? What are you doing to get it? You're coming higher how? <laughs> are you... <laughs> Are you reading the word? Are you sacrificing time to spend with God? Are you busy doing everything else and give God just a little bit? But in the little bit, you want him to move. I don't think we're getting it, brethren. I've been preaching and appealing and saying all these things. And I don't know. Many people in the ministry, they're seeing the power. They're seeing people come, we pray for them, and the demon left. The demon spake over the phone. So many things happen, powerful things over the telephone. People listen. Every time I go back to the, to the, the situation where the lady called from the UK, the lady who, when she turns her pipe on, blood was coming. I think that was one of the most powerful moments 
on the phone. People were listening. She said she see the blood coming. And she said when she put her food on the, on the table, it turned into maggot. She said her refrigerator was shaking like a dishwasher. Many people were listening. And we said, okay, we're going to deal with it now. Because we are people of the living God. We are people that keep the commandments of God. And then we started to pray immediately. And what happened? After the Lord disclosed where the stronghold is, and we get her to put it out, she came back, turned the pipe on. There was water. Everything was broken. Because God's people were praying. God's people believed. If we only believe, brethren, we will experience the power. But God's people not believing, especially us as Adventists. I don't know. Probably the Lord have to go send some angel to shake us. You know? <laughs> no, serious. no, because every time we get higher, we take our time and go right back down into the valley again. The valley of doubt. The valley of fear. The valley of nobody loves me. Nothing is happening for me. How many people search the scriptures, search for the promises and say, God, if you said this, this have to happen. There's cases we're praying for people. And when we're praying, we say, no, Lord, your word said it. We're not leaving tonight until this person is healed. And if you know the ministry rightfully, we stayed and tarried there for a long time, hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. We are tarrying and say so we're not leaving until healing come. If there's sin in our lives, we're going to drop everything. We're going to empty everything and allow the power of Jesus Christ to work. I'm telling you, millions of people are counting on the Bible. There's power in the Bible. I share with you my friend in, in, went to India and they wouldn't allow her to take the Bible in the Taj Mahal. But then I said to her, it's a good thing because you're not supposed to go in there anyway. You know what I mean? You know, and Muslims to carry the Holy Bible going into the Taj Mahal where they worship idol, the king of idol, the seven wonders of the world. Come on, somebody. We need to know where to go. The word of God is precious. I'm telling you. What is the, this wondrous thing? It is the Bible that contains the word of God. God is saying, this great Bible contains power. Power of the word that will change lives, that will move people and turn people upside down like what it did to Paul and Silas. Peter, all these powerful people of God. And this is the last days. Don't we recognize that people are playing church? Don't we recognize that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain? Don't we recognize God's word is a powerful thing that converts and saves those who are lost. Save sinners. That's what God's word does. The word is able to save our souls. That's what the word does. But if, we, if you notice, when we pray for a lot of people, we get them to read Psalms 3. But you know something? If you read Psalms 3, prayerfully, it's different from just reading it fast and don't understanding it. When you read Psalms 3 and say, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Arise, O oh God. When, when you read it like you, you meant it and, and the words have power. I'm telling you, the devil starts to tremble right away. The devil starts to shake and say, no, no, we're going to leave. Stop. But if you are just, Lord, how are they? No. We need to take it as it is. We need to claim the promises. We need to know that the word has power to rake out, power to pull down. The word of God has power. You know, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it talks about, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. 
for it's the power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed. Are you ashamed of the gospel? Are you ashamed of the word? James 1, 21. I'm trying to go fast, so just write the scripture. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. He's saying receive the word. It's given by the Lord. It's here for us. We have access to it. Let him in. Let the word come in and change our lives. God is able. Psalms 19 verse 7, it talks about the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Making the wise simple. I'm telling you, God is able. His word. Men must hear the word before they are saved. That's what will bring conversion. We need to carry the word with us. Everywhere that we go, we need to proclaim the word. I remember I went into a, a Christian home, an Adventist home, and I found a crystal ball when we were praying for them. I took it out, and the lady was getting upset. And I just said, in Jesus' name, we love you. In Jesus' name. And I plead the name of Jesus three or four times, and all of a sudden she changes and says, I need help. Please help me. I need help. I need to be delivered. Just pleading the word. It, it changes heart. It brings conversion. Pleading the word of God. If we don't know the word and carry the word with us, the word is powerful. We are to carry it. When you go to, I'm going to look at Acts chapter 2. Go with me to Acts chapter 2. Just turn the page over. And just write the scriptures down. I, I'm not going to keep you long tonight. Just bear with us. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. So it says, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter, and unto the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Come on, somebody. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What pricked their heart? The word. The testimony, the word of God, prick. Have you, have you ever felt the power falling on your heart until you're wounded? Holy Spirit wounded. I'm telling you. I've heard the word already. Where the Lord used me sometime and when the Lord showed me something while I'm doing the word and my heart is like, wow, God, you are so powerful. And you reason with God. Has God ever reached out in your heart? And speak to you? What about the first time when you met him? When you were converted the first time? Your first love? The Spirit of the Lord pricks their heart. And they cry out and say, what should we do now? And Peter said, repent and be baptized. God is saying to us, is the word reaching our hearts? Is the word, are you studying the word? Do you believe in the power of the word? Do you believe, brethren? Many people listen to this ministry. We're praying for somebody already. And then we said, the demon didn't want to leave. And we said, okay, Satan, we're going to show you something and show you who have the power. The word says, before we call, he answered. Mercy, that's power. When you say that, all demons start to tremble right away. And then we say, Lord, we're going to ask your permission to ask you to send on Gabriel with fire in his hand. Immediately we hear the demons start to cry. 
We heard that few people with me heard that a few times. Sometimes it's more powerful where the demon said, no, no, we're going to leave. I've experienced it. That's tapping into the power source. That's using the word. Remember Elijah. When Elijah, little servant, was crying and said, listen, a great army is coming up against us. Then Elijah says, Father, open this little man's eyes, <laughs> the servant. Open his eyes <laughs> so he can see what's going on. And his eyes were open, and when he pulled the curtain and looked, he see chariot, hills of fire of soldiers of the Lord's army. The question is asked, did Elijah, was Elijah seeing those, those chariots of fire? No, he don't have to see, because he believed. He has faith. He's a man of faith. He don't have to see to believe. Some of us have to see to believe. And that's why we don't have the power. Elijah already know if God said it, he's going to do it. If he said he have the power, he have it. He said if we ask anything in his name, he will do it. If we have this faith, brethren, and claim the word in the last days, don't you see the messages that the Lord has been given us to preach? We just finished the seven churches. The Laodicean church was the last church. The church that is lukewarm. The church that is sleeping. The people that compromise. The Lord is saying now he's talking about his promises. The powerful, the power of the word of God. That if we really believe, if a few people listening and really lacking and believe in the power of God and search for the words, the promises, and say, I'm going to claim this. I need healing. I'm going to claim it in Jesus' name. As the Lord reminds me of this testimony, in Jamaica, when I went, the, the people who deal in Dilarance, the, uh, no, the, where the, the, the stone were th thrown on that house, they came to my house. And when I prayed for them, they asked me, how come you're not coming to the house and everybody from everywhere comes and the stone doesn't stop? And you expect it to stop when you don't come. I said, listen, it's not about me. God have the power. When we pray, the prayer goes up. And then the powerful God come down with the power. That's who send the power. I said, you have it wrong, sister. And when they went home, all the stones stopped. We have some Adventists live next door. They called me down and said, we want to come. And when they came to my house, they said, one question we have. Are you really Adventist? <laughs> we don't expect Adventists to have the power. Hello, who keep the Sabbath? Who keep the Ten Commandments? You don't expect us to have the power? I said, of course, born and bred in the church. Born and bred in the church. But we don't expect Adventists to have power. We expect the Pentecostal and all these people speaking in tongues to have power. What about us? We're not reading the word, you see. We don't know the Bible. I'm telling you, it's powerful. Look at Acts 18, verse 8 and 9. Turn over to Acts 18. We're talking about the power of God. His word is powerful. We need to leave from here and claim the word. If we claim the word and believe, we're going to see some things, guys. I'm telling you, you got to try it. I know some people, <laughs> you know, I went to my friend's funeral and I was piercing around and said, Lord, should I call him for it? And then I said, there's a lot of people here. Everybody may run out of this place. I said, Lord, and I'm asking permission. I'm saying, Lord, what should I do? I was piercing up and down. Listen, we got to claim the power. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> You see, Adventist is going to come alive, you know, and people is going to see the rightful power in the Adventist folks, you know. Okay, go to um, verse 18. Chapter 18, verse 8, sorry. Chapter 8, verse... Sorry, chapter... What did I say? Chapter 18? Yeah, 18, verse 8. So, you see, God is going to do something, brethren. Be ready. You think the last day is going to go like this? Look on the power that his disciples had. Look on the power. 
what about us? Look at verse 8. It says, Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians heard, hear him, hearing believe, and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision, Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. What do you think he's going to speak? Speak the word. He gave him authority to speak the word. Don't forget when Peter was walking into the sanctuary, the synagogue, and when he looked, he saw the man begging and can't walk. Sit down there. And he said, listen, silver and gold have I none. In the name of Jesus Christ, get up. Amen. The man got up. The power, the name. We need to use the power in the last days. We need to proclaim the word. If we want to experience his power, we need to speak it. We need to testify that God is good. Romans 10, 17 talks about the faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Once we hear the word, our faith is going to increase. When we use the word, it changes something. A lot of people come to me and say, how come you don't get attacked all the time? And you're praying for so many people. I tell them, listen, I'm filled with the word all the time till there's no room for the enemy to attack. Now, it doesn't mean I don't sin. The word says the righteous fall seven times and get up. I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep me down. If you look at it, God's words has power like a seed in the kingdom of God. The power of the word is like a seed. When you plant a seed, it's going to germinate and it's going to grow. The word of God has power. It has life begins with the seed. The animal have a seed. The plants have a seed. Us, men, the Bible referred to us the seed of Abraham, the seed. There's something going on that's going to germinate and grow, the power. The same is true with God's spiritual kingdom, the church. Jesus stresses in the parable of the sower about the seed. Some fall on stony ground, but it needs a seed. It needs something to start. Wherever God's word goes, the potential, the potential for the church goes also. If the seed go dormant, no matter how long it's stored there, it will produce in the right time the plants. God will allow it. It doesn't matter. Once we sow his seed, the word of God is placed on somebody's heart. It's going to grow. Don't worry, the Holy Spirit will take time. Sometimes you plant a seed, you go back and it's the person is just the same, all same way, no, no life, not coming to know Christ, and we are worrying about it. The Lord is saying, allow him to do the work. Just carry the word. His word has the power to be all sufficient for every needs. His word can encourage us. His words, no wonder Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning. And we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There's always hope. It strengthens us to be more faithful to the Lord. When we speak the word, it strengthens us. Because if you keep speaking the word, you have to eventually do it. If you keep witnessing to people and say, you know, you have to keep the Sabbath, and you are not keeping it, the Spirit of the Lord is going to prick you. The word is powerful. He's going to convict you and say, you know what? I got to do better. I'm, I'm speaking this thing, but I myself is not doing it. Psalms 119. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That's what it is. It gives light so that we can walk. The power. Psalms 19.8, the statues of the Lord are right. 
rejoice in heart. The commandments of the Lord is pure and enlightening to the eyes. The commandments, his word again is powerful. It protects us from error and sin. It's our guide. The, the word of God will guide us. It's that light that is on that pathway. But if we don't study it, how are we going to walk? We're going to be confused. We can't follow the Lord if we don't have that. Jesus was able to fight the wiles of the devil with his word. When the devil tempts him and he says, man shall not live by bread alone. It confuses the enemy when he quotes the scripture. Many times we're praying for people and the devil comes along and the devil says, you have no power to cast me out. And I said, you're right. But Jesus Christ has the power. Amen. As soon as I said that, they are trembling because he wants me to take the glory to say, I have power. No, I have no power. We are given all things necessary to salvation. The Lord made a pathway with his divine power. Second Peter 1 verse 3. His divine power has given to all things pertain to life and godliness and the knowledge. You can go and read it. God is giving us all these things he has prepared. Sometimes Christians feel that they need something else beside the word and the truth. I'm telling you, brethren, as we are winding down, the word is powerful. Trust me, the word is powerful, brethren. You have to allow the word to penetrate and go through your life. God is calling you. The word has power to judge us on that last days. The word, if we don't keep the commandments, you will come to regret. And God will reject you because you don't keep his word. God is calling you. God's word will be used to judge you and I. Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another books were, were open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. The word of God is going to judge God's people. Remember in Joshua chapter 7, Achan, the Lord said to, to Joshua, your men could not stand because there's sin in the camp. How could I defend you? God is calling us this day and say, listen, we need to repent. We need to come clean and experience the power of the word. I'm telling you, brethren, the word is so powerful. I shared before as we close the testimony. I was called to a hotel room. This woman was possessed. The family refused to keep her in their home. And when I got to the hotel room, she was seated on the chair. The Bible mentioned about lunatic. She looked like she was insane, out of her mind. And as she sat on that chair, I grabbed the word of God. And I started to read Matthew 27. And when he got to the verse that says, he bowed his knees. A power just came down and hit the lady off the seat. And she fell on her knees and calling for Jesus. The power of the word, I seen it with my own eyes. That God is still available. The powerhouse is still available. But God's people in the last days is taking the Lord for granted. That same God who spake and everything come into being. He said, let there be light. And there was light. That God is going to call and he's going to say, all those who are just, let them be just still. The probation is going to close. He said, all those who are unjust, let them be unjust still. 
that final analysis is coming. And the Lord is asking you tonight, how serious do you take me? How serious do you take the word of God? Do you respect God? Do you believe that when you call, that he will answer? Do you believe that he can place I solve on your eyes to see? Many people are learning when we pray for them. That we ask the Lord to open their eyes. Place I solve on their eyes. And the Lord is doing it. I'm here to testify that God is so good. He's so gracious. He's so loving. He do not want none of us to be lost. He wants us to be saved, brethren. But we have a work to do. If we don't trust him, if we don't take his word and turn away from sin, it's going to be too late for some people. I don't know about you. The Lord is calling your hearts right now. Do you really know my word? Do you really trust me as a Christian? Do you really want to come higher? Do you want to be seated around the tree of life? Do you want to look and see Jesus and see the nail-pierced hands? Do you really believe? Holy Spirit, help me. Do you really believe, brethren? Are you just playing church? That day is coming when it's going to be over. That day is coming when it's surely going to be too late. The time to surrender is now. You go in church, but you have no connection. You don't really believe the word. Come on, brethren. He's calling you right now. He's knocking your heart doors. You're watching live. He's knocking. You've been in the church for 30 years. But you never experienced his power. You never speak and see the power of the almighty God work. Tonight he's calling you. He's saying he's evil at the door. He's looking for more Paul and Silas. He's looking for more Elijah's. Where are you standing? He's looking for more Naomi. Where are you standing? Do you want to surrender and give everything to the Lord? Do you want him to really come in and take hold? He said, if you let me in, I will come in. I will sup with you. I'm going to pray now. It's between you and God. Nothing to do with me. I'm just doing what the Lord bids me to do. Somebody need a change. Somebody need restoration. Somebody need cleansing. God is able. This God we serve is able tonight, brethren. He's able. Just let him in. I'm going to pray right now. If it's your desire, you're in the sanctuary and you want to stand, it's up to you. If you're watching live and you want to stand, if you are on the prior line and you want to stand for Jesus, the time is now to stand for him. I'm about to pray and God is about to transform through his word. Because I'm going to ask him according to his will and his purpose and his power to move on somebody's heart. God is going to do something in this sanctuary. Father in heaven, great is thy name and greatly to be praised. God, your people is in your sanctuary. Your people need a breakthrough. Those who are watching, those who are listening, we need a breakthrough, oh God. I pray that your Holy Spirit, your comforter, 
will fall on your people right now. And it will break every powers of darkness. And your people will be released. All those who have been held captive by generational curses, you have the power to break them. I pray, O oh God, that you will break them now and release your children. I claim that they have been released from poverty because you said, I wish above all things that your people prosper and be in good health. I claim it a thousand cattle upon a thousand hills are yours. All the silver and gold is yours. Cover your people tonight. Guide us, O oh God, and cover us. Fill us with your power. And we thank you now as you fill your people in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to say thanks for watching and thanks for supporting us at the Button to Christ ministry. The ministry is growing rapidly. Calls from all over the world. We need your prayers. We need your support. We definitely can't do it alone. We need your prayers. And any way you can support us, we just want to say thanks. Until then, I am Patrick Baker from the Button to Christ Ministry. God bless you. Until then, God bless. Thanks for watching this program. We hope that you were blessed. To further your support with us, please consider giving a donation at buttontochrist.com or .org. Any amount is appreciated and will be used for the continued growth of our ministry and the spreading of the gospel to the world. May God richly bless you and we'll see you next time.